50 years ago tomorrow, on June 3rd of 1965, Ed White made America's first spacewalk, or EVA. But how did NASA plan for such an historic mission? That's what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. The story of Ed White's spacewalk is pretty familiar to diehard space nerds. Around 345 on the third orbit of Gemini 4, Ed White opened the hatch and used a handheld maneuvering oxygen jet gun to push himself out of the spacecraft. He stayed outside for 23 minutes before re-entering the spacecraft around the Gulf of Mexico. It wasn't a perfect EVA because NASA was still learning how to do things like work in space, but it was still a very significant accomplishment in the early Gemini program. So how did NASA decide that the second manned mission of this program would be the one to do an EVA? According to the original schedule, Gemini 3 would be a shakedown flight demonstrating the new spacecraft in orbit. Gemini 4 would push the spacecraft for duration, staying up to seven days in space. Gemini 5 would be the first to rendezvous and dock with an Agena target vehicle. And Gemini 6 would be the first with an extravehicular activity, EVA or a spacewalk. From there, these individual objectives would be compounded into more complex missions, until NASA really knew how to work and live in space in advance of the Apollo lunar landing missions. But this plan was already falling apart midway through 1964. The fuel cells designed to replace the batteries in Gemini were just falling behind schedule and there was no way Gemini 4 could be a long duration mission. But NASA also didn't want to just repeat the shakedown crews of Gemini 3. Gemini 4 needed a new objective, and the only thing it could be ready for was an EVA. Of course, there were a lot of ifs involved in this proposal. The idea of doing an EVA on Gemini 4 was actually first bounced around in January of 1964, and preliminary proposals midway through the year said that there was no reason not to proceed with this massive goal on the second manned flight of the program. Of course, the whole thing hinged on a lot of technological developments. NASA would have to prove the Gemini hatches could be certified safe to open and close in a vacuum. An EVA-capable spacesuit would have to be finished and certified in time. Some system connecting the spacewalking astronaut to the spacecraft would have to be developed as well. And most importantly, the crew would have to be trained and ready to go by launch day. But NASA pressed forward in this era where anything was possible, and by early 1965, things were looking really good for the EVA. But then, on March 18th, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov stepped outside his Voskhod 2 spacecraft to become the first human to ever perform an EVA, which again struck another first for the Soviet Union ahead of NASA in the ongoing space game. Undeterred, NASA continued planning for an EVA on Gemini 4, although it wasn't immediately a publicly known piece of the mission. In the spring of 1965, flight planners started working out all of the details of the actual EVA, what all the controls would be doing and what the astronauts would be doing. By May 19th, every single piece of the EVA puzzle, from technology to astronauts, were deemed ready for the EVA goal. The only thing that remained by the end of the month was announcing it to the public. On Friday, May 21st, the press kit for Gemini 4 was released to the public, and on page 5, it mentioned that one of the goals for the mission was to perform the first EVA. So do you guys have any more questions about EVAs, and specifically about Ed White's EVA on Gemini 4? Leave them in the comments below, or shoot them to me on Twitter. You can find me, I'm AST Vintage Space. And with new episodes going up on Vintage Space every single Tuesday and Friday, be sure to come back right here and subscribe so you never miss an episode.